Greetings. Welcome to the Kingdom Cultural Center. Now, I want to continue with the session that was in the first session. Um, a woman, the woman, was created to assist man. Now, I know, like I said, this is kingdom living. This is the living that you're supposed to have because remember, Throughout everything else, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm almost, I'm, I'm led to, in the next session after this, explain to you and give you a word of encouragement. But until then, we're going to deal with when God said, "Now I'm going to I'm going to read, I'm going to read the verse over again, so you can get an understanding, a true understanding of it." Are you ready? Because it's gonna, some of you are gonna say deep. I like the simplify stuff. We don't need deep stuff. We need stuff that's simplified, like our king did. He simplified it to those who want to hear it. Okay. God said, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let him have dominion, control, in charge. That's what you're talking about. Over the fish. Of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. 27th verse of the first chapter of Genesis I'm going on now. This is the Constitution. Many of you call it the Bible, but in reality, it's the Constitution. I just want to say this, and if you got any problems with that or what I'm fixing to say, email me. We can, we can discuss it. The Bible is written, the Bible is named by man. You won't find nowhere in God's constitution what you call the Bible, the word Bible. Okay? So, having said that, let us go on. So God created man in his, in his own image. In his own image. Okay? In the image of God, he created him. Male and female. He created them. Now, what does he mean by that? You notice, it seems like Eve was there, he created them. No. Adam is the central point and the root for the woman. In other words, the woman came out of man. So God instructed, says, them. One man. But you'll find later on, that if you go in the second chapter, you'll find where God well, maybe I should go on and so you won't have, I, I may miss this in this section and I don't want to miss it. My wife always saying I talk too fast, but okay, now remember the 27th verse where he called them them, Adam them, and it them. God said and blessed them, 28th verse, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. See, I have to be right. I can't afford to be wrong. That's why I'm very careful when I expound from the Constitution, God's Constitution. Now, let's go to the second chapter of the 18th verse, and you'll see what I mean. And the Lord said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper comparable, compatible to him. Look what he did. And the Lord, in the 21st verse, and the Lord God caused the Lord God, I, I love that part because he's the landlord, whether this world system acknowledges it or not, everybody is going to have to bow down to, to King Jesus. But let us go on. The Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then, 22nd verse, 
Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. You understand? This is why in a lot of, in a lot of cases, most cases, a man seeks to have a woman, a wife, a companion. However, the world system does it without marriage, without commit, without marriage. Marriage is an institution that God himself created. Man didn't do that. God did. Lord God did. Let's go on. I'm still in the 22nd verse, in the middle of it. He made into a woman, and he brought her to man. And Adam said, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, shall be called woman. She shall be called woman. Adam did all this. The perfect man. The perfect, obedient man. Adam did this. Now we're talking about from the original, from the start, from the beginning. Not after he fell. We go on. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And they shall become one flesh. Are you, are, are, are you feeling me here? In the 27, 28 verse, he talks about them. When you get married, when you pick a woman, and, and, and I used to believe because, oh, she ain't right for me, she ain't this and that, and then get married. Yeah, I've, I've been married before, and I'm not ashamed of that because shame hinders you from moving on. But I would never do it again. I have a wife right now that even when I think certain things, I think a lot of things. She's right on point. She says what I'm thinking and vice versa. It's amazing. This is when you are in the Holy, when the Holy Spirit dwells in both of your lives. Men, I want to say this so you can get an understanding, fellas. When you get married, you're supposed to already have responsibility, a job to provide for your wife. You're supposed to have that. If she's going to be your assistant and she's going to be your helper, if you don't have a J-O-B or a business, how is she going to assist you? Can't assist you with nothing. And it's the, uh, and I'm telling you, to put the cart before the horse, she's supporting you. And, 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 and no, before you get married, you should have a plan laid out. An income coming in. Look, I made the same thing when I first got married. I was married before. When I first got married, man, I had a job. I had a job. I, you know, I, hey, it was a government job, getting paid. You don't marry a woman and expect that she married and didn't look for a job. All my life, I had a job. I was making money. I could, I provided. When you come into the mindset of the kingdom of God and the concept and study his word and go from the beginning, from the beginning, what was God's intent? His intent was you to lead and your wife was to be an assistant, a helper. You want to be the boss. You lead her and she'll follow your lead. My wife follows my lead. She gives me advice. I listen. When I have to go to counsel, when I have to counsel, we get a lot of emails from individuals with, about marriage. A lot of them has been about marriage and some haven't. Guess what? I have to come in. Uh, we have to have counsel. My wife and I, that's my counsel. We come together and we talk. And we find out who's going to answer this, honey. She answers certain things, and and the Holy Spirit have her to answer certain things, have me to answer certain things. You see, the woman was designed to help the man, to assist the man. She was designed 
to uh, 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 to give him advice, to help. Giving him advice is assisting him. Your husband, women, women, wives, your husband may not be the brightest tool, be the brightest bulb on the tree. But don't think you got to take and lead. Help him, assist him. And husbands, listen to her. Stop being stubborn. And you ain't all of that. That because you the male means you. No. If your wife has a degree and you met her and she had a degree and she's smart, use that. Learn from her. Look, um, right now, uh, I'm not going to touch this right now, but if you have any more questions about that, I'm more than glad to answer. But until then, uh, it's my time to get off of this session. I want you to remember this one thing. Your faith in King Jesus is your greatest commodity. That's what you need. Until next time, you have a nice day. Thank you.